General Martin Dempsey, chairman of the U.S. Chiefs of Staff, is in Israel this week before going on to Jordan. He is checking the preparedness of the U.S. forces and the Israeli and Jordanian armies for their roles in the Syrian war under a master plan projected by President Barack Obama. Obama's final decision on U.S. military intervention in the coming two to three weeks will depend on Dempsey's recommendations. On August 2nd, Debco Weekly revealed that the U.S. plan hinged on a no-fly zone and a buffer strip. The no-fly zone over southern Syria and Damascus would be enforced by U.S., British, French, Turkish, and Saudi Air Force jets. The buffer zone in the south up to Damascus would be captured by 3,000 rebels trained in special operations tactics and armed by U.S. forces in Jordan. Jordanian special forces are to spearhead the operation under U.S. command. U.S. boots will be barred from touching Syrian soil. Dara, fountainhead of the Syrian uprising, will be proclaimed the capital of liberated Syria. Bashar Assad is not marked for ousting, only for pushing into a corner. This week, his forces embarked on blocking tactics by destroying southern rebel strongholds ahead of the intake from Jordan. Solidly behind him are Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, Vladimir Putin, and Hezbollah's Hassan Nasrallah. Assad may take the fight outside his borders by launching missiles against Israel, Jordan, and maybe Turkey. Hezbollah may join in with rocket attacks on Israel. Iran will beef up its active military presence in Syria. Russian rapid intervention units are on standby for saving Assad at their Black Sea and South Caucasian bases. The Russian Mediterranean war fleet is also at hand off Syria, Lebanese, and Israeli shores. And Russian teams have arrived in Syria to man the S-300 anti-air systems for a preempting no-fly zones. The Syrian war may thus bring the U.S. and Russia to the brink of their first major confrontation since the 1973 Yom Kippur War. This has been a Debka File exclusive presentation.